Hello and welcome to Sailor's Project. Today we're going to be 3D printing a scaled up version of my SLA printed micro lenses. So, I did say that we're going to be doing the micro lens uh, post processing techniques this video. The only thing is though, I want to get the actual testing data from my professor, so I'm going to save that till next week. This week I want to scale up a single micro lens and see how it acts when I print it. So that's sort of why we're doing this video. Not because I didn't have anything planned, it's because the plans changed a little bit and so I just wanted to throw something else in there. So let's get to making the lenses, or the lens. So it looks from here that the lens printed okay. Now we're gonna pop it off and get the curing process done. Look at that, that is really good. I mean, it's got a little bit of a head on there from the extra resin, but I mean, it looks pretty darn nice. I mean, it is, from here, you can see it's actually bouncing the light right off. I'm gonna take a quick photo of it. I'll put that photo up here while I'm doing this. So, yesterday, because the reason why I'm doing this video is because I want to get the actual results for the lens before I post them, we found that isopropyl and, uh, what do you call it? isopropyl and just using water are really good for, uh, for getting optically clear lenses. So, in this case, we're just going to use water. Only water. I have to make sure I don't <laughs> throw the actual thing. All right, you know what? We're gonna use the isopropyl only just because of the fact that right now there's enough resin on here to make the lens sort of useless because it'll mess up the profile of it. All right, so now we're throwing it back in the water. I do know that this will frost the lens a little bit, but we sort of don't care because of the fact that for this, we're actually gonna be able to sand the lens, which is gonna be pretty good. If it's even necessary, we might find out that we don't even need to sand it. There's little bubbles on the actual things. There's still bubbles. I think I might have to dip it back in the thing to remove some more, okay. I wonder, how is this set? One of my mentors, or what call it? One of my mentors said that, that I could borrow just a little bit of their isopropyl. So I'm just gonna nicely. Thank you, Julia, for letting me borrow this. There you go. So when I just have the isopropyl on there, it's fine. I think that something, I think, I, I don't know if I have to clean the water or something, but there are little bubbles that are not being left on here. But I mean, look at how optically clear that is. I mean, wow, you can even see just reflecting instantly. Come on, let's see, let me get to focus. Oh well, I can't get to focus, I'll put some, wow, that is amazing. I'm gonna take a, uh, nah. So now what I'm going to do is, yeah, it's already starting to frost a little bit. That is absolutely amazing. It's like I'm looking into a diamond almost. So, since this doesn't have any water on it, the UV, I'm going to just throw it straight in the curing chamber because by doing this, I should be able to get around, I should be able to get around liquid not being able to cure. So, I'm going to get the camera ready to film and we're going to then uh, start that, so. Yeah, while it's curing, which it should be a nice little time lapse down there. What I'm currently doing is I'm 3D printing a larger version of the lens, A, just for display, and B, because my teacher wanted it, and C, just to see if the optic scaling goes up or down. Because, or what I mean by that is, if I scale the optic upwards, does it act the same as uh, the micro version of the lens because it's the same exact dimensions just scaled up by a factor of 10 10 yeah 10 because uh, the radius of the uh, plano convex part or the plano or no, the convex part of the lens is point or 5.1 and on the micro uh, version the micro lens it is 0.51 as its radius so this will uh, allow me to see so that's sort of why I'm doing this, just because I want to see if it scales up, 
if I can get a better lens from, well, not, like, not sanding it, and by scaling it up, and also just to see how it looks. So, by now, the time lapse will be done, and we're actually gonna see how the lens looks. All right, so the lens is done. We have it removed from the supports. Now, I did have to do a bit of sanding, just using some sandpaper after I removed the supports because they were on the bottom, and, uh, yeah, it's definitely made it less optically clear in total. As you can see, it's sort of gray-ish compared to, well, you can see, sort of. I will put better photos of what they look like, but it is, like, definitely, like, the back is definitely, uh, scratched up just because I don't have a huge like a super fine grit sandpaper but when I do spray some uh, stuff in between it does actually make it look a lot better but I mean overall you can see right through that thing I also did drop it so it's sort of just more of a I guess an example but I wonder now if I shine the phone behind the light if it if you could see how it focuses so No, let's see. I'm gonna put the lens up there. There you go. You can sort of see that light. And then it gets brighter. And then boom. You can see how it really nicely though reflects the Come on, focus. How it really nicely reflects the light, just a matter of this back end had the support on it, which makes it look sort of garbage. I mean, you can still see through it, it's just a matter of you can see that it's not, like, fully transparent, which sucks, but there's not really a huge amount I can do, sadly, because that is where the support was and the marks were made. Now, some people say that you can just sand it, which I did, but the only problem is, though, I don't have super fine sandpaper, I only have this stuff, so the marks that are left are, yeah. I actually will try right now dipping this in a little bit of the resin and just seeing how well that works. So let's go and do that right now. Yeah, it sort of still looks the same. It's a tiny bit clearer, but yeah. But I do have to say, and I'll put some photos of this uh, later, it does sort of work. I mean, you could sort of see it. I'm going to see if I can set the focus to actually focus on it. Come on, almost there. There you go. There you go. Now you can perfectly see it. You can see right through it. And then take it. I flip around. And now, how's that? So now if I move my finger back, it moves back on the other one. So you can see this is definitely a very, like a usable optic. Now, of course, it is a little bit scratched because of all the stuff that I did. But it is good to see, though, that a scaled up version does actually work. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And now let's try flipping it over and doing that thing with the light again. So here's our light. Would you look at that? It stays centered. Of course it increases as it get closer, but it stays centered shows that the light is bending towards the top of the lens, which is exactly what we were looking for. So overall, I'd consider this a success. I now have something that when people go and say, oh, what do the lens look like? I can show them this. So again, I made this video just because I wanna actually include the testing rig data in the next week's video. So that's why I sort of just had to throw this one up out of nowhere. So I know it might seem a little bit rushed. The editing might not be as good, but I don't know, I wanted to do a video over this weekend, and this was something that I was going to do in the future, so I decided to move it up now. So, yeah. And I will be including links to the lens files in the description. So, if you wanna download them, do whatever you want, try and recreate what I did, you 100% can. All I did was I clipped off the supports, sanded it using, well, whatever this stuff is. Focus, yeah, I sanded it, whatever, you just using this stuff, used a mixture of both 90% to remove the actual isopropyl, or no, to remove the resin from the beginning, and this is about 70% eh, 70 isopropyl, which removed the rest of the stuff. But as you can see, you'll get a lens that works, it's just more of a matter of, it's gonna require better support placement. So, 
Next time, if I were to do this, I would go and have it oriented sort of like this, where it's a flat way. I'll put a photo of exactly what I mean. And that would put the support around the edges a little bit, but yeah. Because the problem is with the optic this big, there's going to be some amount of support that needs to go on the flat edge, and that means that anything that hits that flat edge will be sort of just ruined, unless I, I don't know, perfectly sand it, but I don't have the tools to do so, so, yeah. But that just shows how crazy it is that the backs of the micro lenses are actually usable. So, I'll see you, <laughs> hopefully, Sunday, if the editing takes too long, Monday, like this time, I'm sorry again. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.